Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da abdatullah continuing on in our study of the treaties by Sheikh Abd al-Razak hafadhallahu ta'ala on the most excellent manners uh, for seeking forgiveness we left off where the Sheikh mentioned he said also from the hadith reported on the subject of seeking forgiveness is that of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported by al-Bukhari that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said by the one who, whose hand is my soul I certainly ask forgiveness of Allah and repent him more than 70 times a day and this is in uh, Bukhari as we mentioned the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was such that Allah had forgiven him his earlier and later sins Yet he still used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness more than a hundred times each day. Indeed, as Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, we used to count that in a single gathering he would say, I ask Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him more than 70 times. Thus, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would continuously ask for forgiveness and give it great importance. So it's very easy for us to say that that's from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and that that is something we must follow and we are in great need of forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal and his favor and his blessings and his reward subhanahu wa ta'ala and also from the ahadith showing the excellence and great importance of seeking forgiveness is that reported by Muslim in his sahih from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said by Allah if you did not commit sins Allah would have taken you away and brought a people who seek Allah's forgiveness and he would forgive them. He would have taken you away and he would have brought a people who seek Allah's forgiveness and he would forgive them. This shows the extent to which Allah the Majestic and Most High loves the seeking of forgiveness and that he loves those who ask for his forgiveness. So this lets us know, of course, we know Tawbah and we know seeking forgiveness, that this, this is Ibadah. This is Ibadah. And as Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Al-Ibadatu kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yaradahu min a'mal al-zahir wa batin the shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned uh, that ibadah as a general term it is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with from those uh, outward deeds and those inward deeds those deeds of the heart all of that makes up uh, uh, makes up ibadah and so we should be concerned about that and we should seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a great act of ibad, ibadah, of gaining the forgiveness, the expiation for our sins, likewise gaining reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, loves seeking forgiveness from Him. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Amongst the perfect names of Allah, the majestic and most high, is Al-Afwa, He who pardons, and Al-Ghafur, He who forgives, and Al-Ghafar, the oft forgiving. Allah the Majestic and Most High loves that we call upon Him by His names and that we worship Him by that which His names demand. As He Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, husna biha. And Allah has the most excellent and perfect names. So worship and invoke Him by them. Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith reported in the two Sahihs from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah has 99 names a hundred except one whoever memorizes and is mindful of them will enter paradise. The Sheikh comments However, memorizing and being mindful of them, al-ahsa or ahsa, is not merely uh, to take these names upon a piece of paper and to recite them, as some people do. In fact, the scholars have explained that ahsa of the names comprises 
three levels. The first of these is to memorize the names. The second is to understand their meanings. And the third is to call upon Allah by these names and to act as they demand. So it shows us that there's various levels when we talk about uh, learning and understanding the divine names of, uh, and, and, and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicating to him, to Barak wa ta'ala, that it, 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 it uh, necessitates three things, as the Sheikh said. He said the first is to memorize those names. So memorize what you can of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and his attributes. And the second is to understand those meanings. So that means it's, an obli it's obligatory upon us to understand those names that we're supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by. Those names that we memorize, it's not just sufficient that we memorize, but we need to know and understand those, those, uh, those names. And that comes through ilm, that comes through seeking knowledge, Islamic knowledge, and knowledge of tawheed, knowledge of al-asma'i wa sifat. And the third is to actually supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes. As an example of this, we may take from the names of Allah that of uh, At-Tawwab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is At-Tawwab. We then understand that its meaning, he who guides his servants to repent and accepts their repentance. So that's that's the meaning of At-Tawwab. Is telling us that Allah the Majestic and Most High accepts his servants' repentance, guides them to repent, grants that to them, we also understand that He, the Most High, is the only one to grant forgiveness. Having understood all of this, we act as the name demands by repenting to Allah from all of our sins. So it shows us, it necessitates that we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it necessitates that this is a part of Tawheed. So this is only to Allah. We don't have to go to the Imam and confess our sins. We don't have to go to the priest, as the Catholics do, and confess our, our sins. We don't have to confess our sins to the sheikh. But rather, our repentance is to Allah Azza wa Jal. We have sorrow in our hearts for the sins that we committed. We have the determination to not return back to those sins. And we leave those sins. That is Toba in Islam. And all of that goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an act of ibadah. And so it, it doesn't require that you go to someone and you confess or you confide in. Perhaps you may want some guidance, some advice on how to go about leaving sins or something or, you know, that you confide in one of your elders or your or one of the mashayikh, or someone you trust. And that's, that's fine. But you're not seeking toba from them. So it's very important for it to distinguish that and understand that, that that Islam is about tawheed. And that is, A'zam ma amr Allahu bihi a tawheed. The greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you with is tawheed. And we ask Allah the Almighty, by his divine names and attributes to forgive us of our many sins, to accept our fasting, to accept our good deeds and forgive our many, many evil deeds. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushurika bika wa ana a'lamu astaghfiruka lana al-alamu. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.